one week ago today, an event occurred that uh, I can honestly say makes me truly thankful to even be here to talk to you guys today. A little over a week ago, uh, our channel released a video describing one of my bucket list dive trips. And that was going to be to go visit the islands of Socorro and dive there amongst some of the great giant pelagic animals that they have. I told you that it was going to be an epic trip. Well, it turned out to be epic for all the wrong reasons. And I'm here to tell a little bit uh, about the tale of what occurred and uh, some channel updates of how things might be going forward for us for at least a little while. On the morning of Thursday, May 13th, uh, we arose to the beautiful sight of the sun rising over San Benedicto Island, which was going to be our first stop. We were going to do a number of dives around that island that morning. The first dive uh, was going to be a checkout dive. And this is a, a way for us to uh, double check our weighting, make sure that we, our gear is all functional, and also I had my camera system with me. I wanted to make sure that I had the buoyancy set correctly and that uh, we would be good to go for the rest of the trip. In this instance, we decided that uh, we were in shallow enough water. The ship had anchored in about 40 feet of water. Um, and so uh, we were simply going to do a giant stride off the back from the dive deck. Tagline was there, uh, so the group could assemble on the tagline and we would all descend at the same time. I entered the water with a, a giant stride because of the size of my camera. Uh, I did not take that into the water with me and would have to turn around and go back and someone would hand it down to me. As soon as I entered the water, I realized very quickly there was a very strong current. Uh, the effort to simply swim back to the boat was intense but I was able to get back to the boat. I got my camera, clipped it off to me, moved over and got onto the tagline. At this point though, I could notice that I was quite out of breath. Uh, as a diver and a dive instructor, uh, I, take, uh, I try to take good, good care of myself. Uh, I work out, uh, I try to eat appropriately. However, I felt quite uh, burdened by the current and simply even holding on to the tagline uh, was a struggle. At that point, we did a quick weight check and the entire group descended. And as we descended, uh, I put my eyes on my dive master who made a beeline for, there was a, uh, an area in the rock that was inset where there would be a little bit of protection from the current, but it meant swimming against the current to reach that point, uh, which took, again, quite a bit of effort. It was at that point in the dive when I began to experience some burning sensation in the middle of my chest, just above my stomach. I do suffer from a, a little bit of gastroesophageal reflux. I have a little bit of acid at times. Uh, I had forgotten to take my medication the day before and that morning, which normally settles my stomach prior to dives. And so I was starting to kick myself because I'd forgotten to do that. As the dive progressed, the burning seemed to worsen. Um, again, we were continually fighting current throughout the dive. Most of it we were trying to drift with that, but at certain points we would stop to try and uh, see some of the, the wildlife there. And we saw uh, a multitude of uh, smaller white-tipped sharks and at, what po at one point, a giant manta ray came overhead, which was uh, an awesome sight for, for everyone. He did a, a couple of circles around us. Uh, the uh, tension in my chest was definitely rising and getting uh, more intense. And uh, so I decided with my dive buddy, it was my wife, who was also running low on air, to make an ascent without the group at that point. My dive profile, I got no deeper than 65 feet and being very careful to monitor my dive computer on the way up to monitor my ascent. Inflating our SMB at the surface, 
uh, skiff came along, picked us up, put us back on board. Um, again, the tension in my chest and the burning continued. And I felt like I just needed to get back on the boat and get uh, some medication, uh, let that settle down. Maybe I was going to sit out that second dive just to make sure that I was good to go. So we returned to the boat, put our gear away, head back to our room, and I take some of the medication that I take to usually reduce the acid in my stomach. Within a half hour, there was no resolution of that, and so I then attempted to take some more antacids, and in minutes, the pain intensified greatly. It spread across my chest, and I was beginning to have pain in my back. Much, much more intense than I'd ever experienced in my entire life. This was the first dive of the first day in the Socorro Islands. Uh, obviously, I knew that if I made this uh, known to the crew, my trip was probably going to be over. Um, and so I pondered it for a while, which is probably not a great idea. Um, but eventually we did alert the crew and I have to say from that point forward the crew of the Nautilus Bellamy were unbelievable. Captain Ramon, the uh, dive master Ronald who spent most of the time with me uh, was incredible. There was another physician on board. Um, I have a medical background myself but another physician on board who then came to evaluate me phone calls were placed to Divers Alert Network. Ironically enough, we had planned to put together several videos discussing what is Divers Alert Network and what do they do for divers. Well, you can be guaranteed that we're going to accelerate that process and put together a series for divers because of what I experienced. The uh, physicians that the captain talked to advised administration of aspirin, and that I was to be put on 100% oxygen immediately. And at that point, the decision was made that I should be evacuated from the ship. San Benedicto Island lies three hours south of Socorro Island. On Socorro Island, the Mexican Navy has a naval base. There is a runway there, and uh, there is a mechanism for civilians to be evacuated from that site. So, the next step, my chest pain intensified uh, to the point where I've never experienced pain quite like this. I never lost consciousness. Uh, I was awake and aware the entire time, uh, but very aware that something major was happening inside my body. Um, the physicians from Divers Alert Network then advised administration of sublingual nitroglycerin which is a medication which will dilate blood vessels and uh, potentially allow better perfusion, better blood flow to occur if certain organs were being affected. And obviously at this point, I was very concerned that I was having a major heart problem. Um, after administration of two sublingual nitroglycerin, that brought my pain level down significantly, not completely. Uh, but certainly then that made me well aware of the fact that I may be suffering uh, a cardiac problem. Once we reached uh, Socorro Island, a uh, Navy vessel pulled alongside the Nautilus Bellamy. I was uh, placed in a stretcher after uh, intravenous line was started. Uh, I was then transported across the water to an ambulance from the ambulance to a group of waiting medical personnel who had flown down from San Jose Cabo. Uh, that included three uh, nurses and one critical care specialist physician. Again, did their evaluations and off we went in a very tiny plane flying at 1,000 feet of altitude given that I had been diving that morning. And about two hours later, I arrived in San Jose, Cabo. Upon arrival, uh, there was a cardiologist there waiting to uh, evaluate me. Uh, instantly, blood was drawn 
and an EKG was obtained. What we did see on the EKG was the fact that I had flipped T waves in V4, 5, and 6. And this could well indicate that I had an ischemic event occurring in the posterior wall of my heart, thus potentially why I was having significant back pain. Blood work did show that my cardiac enzymes were elevated, which can, gives you the conclusion that I was having an ischemic event in my heart. And for the non-medical people out there, I was having a heart attack. At that time, the cardiologist made it known that the next thing for us to do would be to perform a cardiac catheterization to evaluate the blood vessels in my heart. I remember waking up from the catheterization procedure with the cardiologist right there talking to me. Uh, and then he said, we have very good news. There is no blockage. Your vessels all looked very healthy. We see no obvious damage to your heart at this point. However, we will confirm that with an echocardiogram in the next few days. Another reason that I went to Socorro Islands at this time of the year was I turned 50 this year and uh, my birthday is May 14th. So I got to spend my 50th birthday in an intensive care unit in San Jose Cabo when my hope was to be underwater spending time with giant manta rays and bottlenose dolphins and sharks. But if it's the difference between not being here and being here, then I'm very grateful to have spent some time in a Mexican hospital. So how does something like this happen to an otherwise normal appearing heart with no blockages and normal motion? That's the question I had, obviously, after this event. And uh, the initial working diagnosis is that this was a result of what is termed a vasospasm, a coronary artery vasospasm. Uh, that's a mechanism whereby the artery or arteries, for whatever reason, decided to squeeze down and limit blood flow through them to the rest of the uh, muscle. Um, so these are the questions that uh, I have. And obviously uh, the next step for me is I'm, I'm very lucky to live quite close to uh, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, uh, Minnesota. And uh, I have plans in place to have a full and thorough uh, cardiology workup to determine uh, was this a one-time freak event? Uh, do I have a, an underlying issue that I've been unaware of all this time, even though uh, I've always been active and healthy and never suffered this kind of a situation in the past? And if I do have an underlying uh, potential for this, uh, are there ways to prevent it from ever happening again? Uh, and so I would say this is going to take me out of the, uh, out of the water for some time. Um, getting back into diving was one of the first and foremost thoughts that I had. Uh, obviously, we need to be healthy uh, to do that. And so uh, that means that uh, potentially throughout most of this summer, uh, I'm not going to get a chance to put my head underwater. Uh, but never fear, we still have plenty of great content uh, that we have upcoming for our viewers. Um, Josh, my cohort, uh, will be diving throughout the summer and uh, we'll be bringing you programs with him. I'm very excited about an upcoming program that we're about to release that uh, is a collaboration that we've done with D for Diving, uh, Gary and the crew down in uh, the Caribbean have worked with us on a rebreather uh, episode discussing decompression planning. And so uh, we've got lots of, of good stuff. Uh, our channel continues to grow. Uh, we thank everybody for their support. And I sincerely thank everyone who has reached out to me over the past few days to uh, check in. And uh, it's always nice to know there's, there's people out there that, uh, that are thinking of you. So uh, that's all I have for today. We just wanted to give you guys a, a quick update and uh, allay my apologies for the, the fact that uh, uh, at least at this time, it's still on my bucket list, but at this time, we won't be able to bring you very much from the Socorro Islands. 
Either way, guys, I, uh, I, I wish you a very good diving season this summer as COVID settles down. Have fun. Dive safely.